my name is Craig Harrendance. Um, uh, 53 years old, uh, was a motorcyclist, and uh, got into motorcycling around about 35 years ago, um, purely as a, a means of transport to get back and forth to work. Um, and then I sort of escalated that hobby then into um, sort of sporting elements, track days, club racing, um, and just general sort of pleasure activities on a motorcycle. Unfortunately, about nine months ago, um, I had a, quite a serious motorcycle crash um, with no one else involved, um, and that was the, the start of the, the new life now, which I've got to live as a result of that crash. So my day really had planned out from memory like I would normally do on a day off. So I got up when I got up, I went for breakfast, I came home, um, I believe I washed the car and I washed the motorcycle. And before the crash, I was a keen indoor rower. So I would have definitely had a session on my rowing machine before the ride. Straight after the rowing, I did all my sit-ups and press-ups, had a shower, had a shave, straight out on the bike, obviously wearing all the protective equipment, um, doing the usual pre-flight checks, but my journey was cut very short, um, around about two or three minutes from the minute I left the house. Um, and that's, that's when it happened. Back in April 2023, uh, the week that we met Craig, uh, he'd uh, lost control of his motorbike coming up to a roundabout and uh, been, been thrown, hit the roundabout head on and been thrown uh, a, a distance from his motorcycle. And when we arrived, he was still lying face down on the ground in his leathers and helmet. We obviously turned him over, took his helmet off. Uh, we, we do a lot of things uh, sort of simultaneously, but uh, managed to get observations on him. It was obvious that he was quite agitated. He, he may have sustained a head injury we were concerned about at that point. Um, and his blood pressure was incredibly low and his heart rate was very fast. There were lots of things that we had to do. We, we, we gained intravenous access, put a drip in, which is going to be needed. And we, we realised quite quickly that he was going to need uh, the blood products that we carry. Uh, and it in fact turned out later that actually Craig needed virtually all the blood products we carry, which is always a worry because patients who, who are that sick often don't survive their illness actually. Uh, we give some specialised drugs to help the clotting and we realised that Craig was going to need to have an anaesthetic at the roadside as well to, for not just pain relief but knowing that he was going to potentially need uh, a lot, lot of other interventions once he got to the hospital. What we aim to do is really start the, the process, all the things that would be done in the emergency department, we aim to start uh, at the roadside uh, to, to, to hasten things along and start that the, um, the treatment as early as possible to, to, to help survival and, and hopefully recovery as well. Although it had been difficult to examine him initially because he was quite agitated, we re-examined him just before we loaded onto the aircraft and discovered that he had a, a really large wound to his lower back in the sort of pelvic area. Um, we carry some very specialised um, some gauze ribbon that we can pack into the into the wound to stop that bleeding and and that's what we had to do and it, it turned out that Craig had a really complicated and complex uh, pelvic fracture. So my left tibia and fibula was an open fracture, the femoral head had sheared on the, sort of the ball joint I suppose. So they put a, a DHS, a dynamic hip screw through that. My right ulna, open displaced fracture, one of the serious injuries was the, the sacrum bone at the lower spine that was sheared and smashed. Pelvic injuries to the left hand side as well. Um, I had devascularization of left kidney, a puncture in the lung and spleen. Then C5, 6 and 7 vertebrae were fractured as well. The, the, the doctors within the service are generally all consultants. Um, we work in a variety of specialties. Mine is intensive care, though whilst Craig wouldn't remember me from his intensive care stay, I was lucky enough to look after him uh, during his time in Cardiff. I, I, you know, I just want to thank the Welsh Air Ambulance Service without shadow of a doubt. If, if they weren't there where they were, I don't think they'd be here.
we, everybody needs that facility for wherever they are, whatever they're doing. You know, without it, lives will be lost. There's no doubt about it, lives will be lost.